It's Richard Gladwell here for SciWorld. We're here with B Peter Burling at the end of uh, day two on the A-Class Cat Worlds. Peter, how did it go today? Yeah, kind of had a pretty up and down day. Um, gave myself plenty of chances, but made a fair few slide through as well, so I ended up with a second and a fifth, and uh, I was pretty happy with that considering, well, considering what was out there today. You look like you're pretty deep in the fleet at times. How did you get out of that? Yeah, well, the first race I was up there the whole time, and had a few few chances of leading and didn't really sell but didn't really sell the first beats that well today so I kinda of had to come from behind most of the day and that second race I was yeah, I think fortieth or something after the first lap and just chipped away and had a couple of really good downwinds and ended up fifth. So So what do you do when you have a couple of really good downwinds? I mean are you foiling flat out or sailing deeper angles or what? Yeah, well when you foil your apparent goes so far forward and you kinda of go a couple of knots quicker and about 20 degrees lower so you, um, if you get it really well in the groove you just kind of sail straight through to lure to people and it's pretty pretty hard to do and pretty pretty hard in the shifty stuff because you, you're concentrating a lot on the foiling and it's pretty easy to miss a few shifts and things like that as well so I think those last two has managed to stay in the pressure pretty well and, and make up a lot of ground. Because we see a lot of competitors going up and down the fleet, is that essentially what's happening? They're just getting in the right spot, getting the foiling going and really pushing hard? Yeah, well I think there's only really about five or six of us that really can foil properly and, and quickly and everyone else kind of has it, their, their modes that are fast but I think when we do get it foiling we've got a pretty good edge over most people out there. We see a few competitors, particularly on that first leg, where they went around the top mark and reared up and did some pretty spectacular crashes and climbs. What's happening there? Yeah, we've kind of you got a fair bit of lift on the board, and you, you're almost set up for your downwind, really, and you're not really the boats are set up to go upwind and downwind, not really reaching. So when you deload everything, and you get quite a bit of airflow going under the tramp and things like that, and just rears up pretty easily until you're actually borne away and going downwind or going upwind so that, that offset's probably one of the trickier times to keep the boat in the water but yeah, it's definitely doable you know. Is it as out of control as it looks or is it? Well, it's not really that in control um, I think it's it's obviously pretty new in this class and to have boats foiling with this kind of foil arrangement so it's um Something that is definitely definitely learning a lot about each time you go out yachting, and well, I suppose the other thing is the boats are pretty fragile, so we can't really do that much practice between between races. We're kind of risk of having a little breakage, so yeah, she's a pretty delicate balance. What happens upwind with the foils? What's the philosophy there? Uh, I leave a fair bit of lift on. Everyone else, everyone has their own philosophy. Um, definitely, when it gets windier, more like 20 knots, you can get a lot of lift and almost your boat's very light in the water uh, yeah if you crack sheets and put overlaid it you can get it out and, and foil it but it's not really a on the wind mode I suppose we're uh, yeah generally just deloading that lured hull with, with a fair bit of lift seems to be the go. So there's no high load low mode like we saw upwind in the America's Cup? Oh yeah there's definitely a high mode low mode but I think our low mode's a, a lot slower than our high mode, so we don't really, unless you're in like a massive shift coming in overlaid or something like that, which we were a few times today, um, I don't think you'd ever see the popping up. And how's the regatta shaping up for you? Where are you lying overall? Oh, I'm not really sure to be honest. Glenn's had, yeah, obviously two firsts and a second, uh, and then he broke gear in that last race, so he's, he's going to be a little way out when, the, when a drop comes through, but yeah. I think I'm keeping it relatively close and just trying to build on it. I haven't really done much sailing in the ACATs, so just trying to trying to build on it, really. You saw the Team New Zealand chase boat out there. What are they saying to you? Not a lot, really. Um, oh, yeah, we've got our, our own chase boat out as well. I think they're just enjoying watching. And in that first race, it was pretty cool that yeah, we got one, two, three, four between uh, Glenn, myself, Blair and Ray. So, um, yeah, they're pretty stoked with that and it was pretty cool. OK, thanks very much. Yeah, cheers.